No introduction, so I'm just gonna skip the first slide. Uh, I'm Michael Matlu. Uh, I work on the Go team. Uh, I focus on developer tools. Uh, and today, I'm gonna be talking about the Golang.org Xtools Go analysis package. So what is this? Well, uh, here's the Go doc. Uh, it's a package that you can use to analyze Go code, to write analyses for Go code that other people can use and to analyze your own Go code. So, so what are analyses? Analyses are programs that can examine your code and provide feedback. This feedback can be uh, your code isn't formatted the right way or there are lint errors. It could be uh, your program has a security vulnerability. It could be your program is broken and sucks. It could be any of those things. <laughs> And uh, analyzers can do all of that. Uh, let me show you an example uh, of such an analysis. So here's a comp package. I love using this package. Uh, I use it instead of reflect deep equals because it's better. Um, and you shouldn't use reflect deep equals in tests. Uh, and uh, it takes two values uh, that, that should be the same type, and it compares them for equality. So this is a common thing you want to do in your test. You have a got and a want. You want to compare them for equality. Uh, this is what you should use to do it. And uh, let me show you some tests that I have that uses this. Here's my code that I'm testing. Uh, so this is pretty straightforward. I have an x, no fields. They're all equal to each other. Uh, this should make things pretty easy. Uh, they have a string method, pretty straightforward. Uh, and there's a, a new x method that creates a new x. So this is all like pretty standard stuff. So this is a code that we're testing. Let's look at a test. Uh, here's my test. I have a want and a got. Pretty standard go testing conventions. Uh, my want is a literal value. That's what I expect it to look like. And the got is I am calling the function that I'm trying to test. So I'll just call comp equal with these two values. They look equal. How can they not be equal? Uh, they aren't equal. Um, so I get this error message, and this is super confusing. It says, got instance of an x, want instance of an x. Huh, they're the same thing. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, I'm super confused. I can spend tens of minutes debugging something like this, wasting my life away. What's going on? Well, the problem is that got is a pointer to x. It's a result of new x. And to want is an x that was just a literal x value. So the types are different. Um, and comp equals wants the types to its arguments to be the same. So this is really annoying. I could have stared at that code for tens of minutes and not figured out what was going on and I feel like I've wasted my life. So what do we do? Um, I have a proposal. My proposal is that we use analyzers. And we're going to write another program that will check your program. Uh, and it will tell you if there's like, anything wrong with it. So, so let, me, let me show you something amazing. Uh, so I'm just like, you know, in, in my demo directory, I have some code. I'm using modules because I'm like, you know, a good boy. And uh, now I'm going to look at a.go. So this is pretty much the same thing I showed you earlier, just uh, better formatted for the terminal. Um, and I have a program. It's called check. And I'm just going to run it on the code in this directory. <gasps> Wow, this could have saved me so much time earlier. So what it's saying is exactly the problem that we had. It examined my code, and it determined that comp equals arguments must have the same type, but it's called to a pointer to an x and an x. And so this tells me exactly what I need to do and where I need to go, a.go line 20, to fix it. Wow. This is... This is so cool. 
Uh, and, and this is an analyzer. So that check program that I wrote is an analyzer. It looks at my code. It provides feedback for me. And I can use that feedback to fix bugs in my code. And th these, this feedback is what we call a diagnostic. And a diagnostic, again, like I said, can be anything. It can be like lint errors. It could be severe bugs and anything in between, just anything that you can use while you're writing your code uh, to make it better. There we go. Uh, and so uh, I think they're really useful because they can spot errors that humans can miss. The example before, we could have spent so much time looking at it and not figuring out what the problem was. And uh, because uh, we have an analyzer, uh, the computer will look at the code and will always get it right. It always knows that there's something wrong with it and it can report it to us and we can fix it. So let's take a look at some analyzers in the wild. You might have heard of GoVet. It ships with Go. Uh, and some GoVet checks run when you run Go test. GoVet is a set of very high confidence checks that you can run on your programs. It'll tell you things that are almost certainly wrong with your program that you can fix. And the analyses in GoVet are all written using the analysis framework that I'm showing you today. There's also static check, which has way more analyses than GoVet and can find even more problems with your code. Also uses the analysis framework. These are both great sources of examples for analyses. But let's go back to our example at hand. Let's check comp equal and make sure that it's being called and held the right way. Here we go. So every analyzer starts with this analyzer value. This is the configuration for our analyzer. Every analyzer has a name, has a doc, which says what the analyzer does. It's allowed to depend on the results of other analyzers. Here we're depending on the result of the inspect analysis. I'll show you what this is doing a bit later. Um, and finally, we have a run method. This actually does the work of analyzing. It takes the syntax and the types of your program, and it produces the diagnostics with the information that we talked about earlier. Uh, syntax and types. Uh, so what, what are syntax and types? Let me show you. So comp equals got want uh, is, is the code that is represented with the syntax below it. So this represents, uh, this diagram represents a syntax, which is a series of Go structures uh, that represent your code. So there's a structure, a node, that rep represents the whole thing, this function call, which contains uh, a, the actual function you're calling, comp equal, and the arguments. And the arguments, in turn, contain the got and the want. So these are structures that your program can look in to see what your code actually is. So then you can report diagnostics when there are problems. And on top of that, there are types. Types are essentially annotations on the syntax that say what type that particular piece of code has, if it's an expression. So the entire function call evaluates the Boolean. So it has an annotation that says that it's a bool. Similarly, comp equal is a function. And most critically for us, got is a pointer to x and want is an x. So if we have access to these types in our analysis, we can look at them, say, these types are not equal, and report a diagnostic to our user. And this is exactly what we're going to do in our analysis. So here's our run function. Run takes as input this analysis.pass. So this is our best friend when writing an analysis. It essentially contains the input, which is the syntax and types and other things the analysis framework gives us, and also provides the way that we report diagnostics. We can also return a result that can be used by other analyses. This analysis is just going to re report diagnostics to users, so we're just going to return nothing here. Uh, but if you remember, we do use the result of the inspect analysis. And the results show up in this pass result of map, 
which is keyed by the analyzer value for that analysis. So we'll look up the result of the inspect analysis and do a type assertion because we know all of those results will be inspectors. So, so what is this inspector? Before this analysis runs, uh, the dependency, the inspect analysis, prepared a summary of the code that we're looking at. It went through the tree, it found all the nodes, it, it cached some things, it's like really nice, it's really fast, and now we can use this inspect preorder method that it prepared for us to go through the tree. So, so what does this preorder method do? It'll traverse uh, all of the syntax nodes, those, those yellow bubbles you saw earlier, and we'll filter them. Uh, we only want to look at call expressions because we care about calls to comp equal where the types don't match, and we don't care about anything else that's going on in the code, so we'll just skip those. And for each of those, we're gonna call this inspect node function. So that's gonna get that node, that yellow bubble, as an input, and then determine whether to report a diagnostic, and if so, it'll report the diagnostic. So let's look at inspect node. Inspect node consists of three steps. The first step is we're gonna find out which function we're calling. The second step, we're gonna see if that function is comp equal. And the last step is that we're going to check the types, and if they're not the same, we'll report a diagnostic to our users. Okay, let's stop one. So we did a filter. We know that everything that we're getting is a call expression. So right off the bat, we can do a type assertion. Then we'll use type util callE to get the information for the function that we're calling. And we'll, do, we'll try to do a type assertion to a function. Now in Go, there are some things that look like function calls that aren't actually function calls. And in the syntax, they're represented as function calls because the syntax doesn't discriminate between what the code is doing, just essentially what it looks like. But the types, no. So we can check here. And if it's not a function, we're just gonna return, we'll leave. So now, at step two, we know we're looking at a legit function call. And we have the information for what function we're calling, so we can check the name and make sure that it's the right function. Here, the full name function is going to return uh, the, pack the full package path qualified name of the function. So we can just check that, and if it's not what we want, we'll leave. Bye. And now, we're here, step three, we know we have a call to comp equal, so all we have to do now is check to make sure that the argument types are the same, and if they're not the same, we'll report analysis to the user. So we'll grab the arguments, and then we'll use this types info that's on the path. So this is essentially a map from those yellow bubbles you saw representing the syntax to those red annotations that you saw. The map lets us jump between those. So we'll jump between it, we'll give it the syntax, we'll get back the type, and now we have the type of each of those two arguments. And all we need to do now is check to see if they're the same. If they're not the same, we'll report to the user that there's something wrong. And we'll pass the position of the function that we're calling so that the user has the line number information and a message uh, this just fits the screen, but you know, hopefully you have a better, more descriptive message for your user. That's it. We wrote the analysis that you saw earlier. That's all the code for it. Let's look at the analysis action plan, the, th the three steps that we took to write this analysis. Step one, we filtered the nodes that we cared about. We cared about function calls to comp equals. Then we examined the syntax and type information to meet a condition. We wanted to see that the argument types weren't the same, and if so, we would report a diagnostic to the user, which is the third step. So following these three steps, we can write most of the analyses that we would want with the analysis framework. The nodes, the conditions that you meet might be different, but this is a general, oops, this is a general flow. So that's it. We wrote an analyzer. But can we make it better? I think we can. Um, and 
I'm gonna show you two things that you can use to make your analyses even better. The first is facts. So facts allow you to create annotations similar to the type annotations that you saw earlier. So we can, for instance, use this to generalize the analysis that we wrote to learn which functions require the same argument types. And if our analysis determines that a function requires the same argument type, we can save a fact, an annotation on that function. Then later, um, when we see any function that has that annotation on it, we can report bad usages of those functions. So those are facts. They're great. I don't have uh, time to go more deeply into them, so I would recommend you look them up. Uh, this is a really long link, but just go to the Go doc, and there's a section called Modular Analysis with Facts. Just, just look for facts. You can't miss it. Okay, let's talk about the more exciting thing, suggested fixes. So suggested fixes let your analysis suggest replacement code. And users can accept that replacement directly in the editor. So if your analysis knows how to fix the problem it reports, it could show that fix to the user, and the user won't even have to figure out how to fix a bug in their program. Demo time. OK, so this is the code we saw earlier, but now I'm looking at it in, uh, in an editor. And I can see these squigglies. So, you know, these are lint warnings over here for, for new X and test something. Uh, but the squiggly for comp equals uh, is actually what? OK, not good. No. <laughs> OK, uh, my demo failed. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Why is this happening? Okay, well, too bad. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> what you were supposed to see uh, is, uh, I'm just gonna try one thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm trying. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you for whoever gave that suggestion. Um, so I have this quick fix button here, and okay, you, you, you can't see what this says, but this, this tiny thing here says dereference pointer. And that's exactly what we need to do, right? Got is a pointer to an x, so if we dereference it, then we're comparing two x values, they're the same type, and our program will work properly. So I can just click on quick fix and click on this tiny thing you can't see, and boom. Ooh, <laughs> wow. This is amazing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I, I, I'm just blown away by that. Uh, how, how did we do that? Uh, so remember this code earlier? So this was this third step where we checked the types and reported uh, if they weren't the same. So we're going to replace this code here, where we report the error uh, with the diagnostic, with this code. This is a little bit more complicated, but let's take a look at what it's doing to report with fixes. So first step, the same as before, we check to see if the types are identical. If they're not, this time we're going to collect the fix for uh, this issue. And we'll do that by checking this particular case. So we can't fix all the code in general. There could be two types that are completely unrelated to each other, and the code could be totally broken. And in that case, the user is out of luck. This isn't an AI or anything. But um, what we can do is we'll check this particular case when one of the types is a point to the other type, because this is a common case. So if the first type is a pointer to the second type, then we'll generate a fix to dereference that first type, and vice versa. And then we're going to report to the user uh, with the fixes uh, that we generated, and those will show up in the editor. So, so 
Uh, we have a bunch of helpers here. Let's take a look at them, right? We have is pointer two, we have fixed dereference, and we have report with fixes f. So is pointer two is pretty straightforward. Um, if you know the types package. So uh, we're going to see uh, if our type is a pointer type. And if it is, then we'll check to see that the pointer's lm, which represents the type the pointer is pointing to, is equivalent to the second type using types identical, which we did before. So this is how we check that one type is a pointer to another type. Next, this is how we generate the fix. So we're going to put our fix in this buffer because that's what our function needs. And we'll call format.node that basically generates the string code from the syntax that we have. And we'll generate the syntax uh, to dereference it. We're basically using the star expression, which is pretty much what it says. We just add a star to the beginning of it. It allowed the right parentheses everywhere, so we don't need to worry about that. And now we have this replacement code. So we have to put it into a suggested fix. We have a message. So in that thing that I clicked that you couldn't see earlier, it said dereference pointer. That's a message over here. Then we have text edits. These are the actual code replacements that we're going to do. And we're going to replace the code that's in the range of the expression. So the pause and end are the offsets in the file that we're replacing, and replacing it with the literal bytes that we have in our buffer, which represent the starred expression, the dereferencing. Finally, we'll return the fixes, uh, which there's just one uh, in the function. Finally, we have this report function. So here we're calling the complicated version of the report function, which takes a raw diagnostic that allows you to put all sorts of things in. Here, we report the range, not just the line number, but the actual range of where the diagnostic is. And that's what allows VS Code to highlight uh, or yellow squiggly underline the actual code uh, that's affected. This is the message, same as before. Finally, we'll put in our suggested fixes. And that's it. <sighs> oh, man. That was a lot of code. But we're, we're done with code now. And uh, we have an analysis that can generate suggested fixes and fix people's code for them. So now we have the analyzer value, but we need to plug it into something to actually run our analyzer. And the first thing I'm going to show is creating a command line tool. This is the code for the check program that you saw earlier. With this code, you've seen everything in that check program that ran. And this is what we do. We have single checker, which provides a main for your program. So this takes an analyzer value and does all the work, it has a bunch of flags that configure it, it'll read all your code, it'll parse it, it'll type check it, it'll run your analysis, any of the dependent analyses that you have, it'll produce the diagnostics and it'll print them out for you to your terminal. It does all of that, all you need to do is provide your analyzer, this is the comp equal .analyzer, the value that we looked at earlier that provided the configuration for our analysis. The next thing you could do is contribute to that. So if you've written an analysis that is really fantastic, that is almost always correct, that applies to all Go code, then you can contribute it to that, and it will run for every Go user. Amazing. That's a huge force multiplier. The next thing you can do is you can contribute to Go Please. So Go Please is a project that we've been working on in the Go team. It is a language server protocol server for Go. So what this does is provide smartness for your various editors. So it provides auto-completion, jump to definition, and all of that stuff, and it provides analyses. So it is what provides to your editor those yellow squigglies that you saw that show that there are issues with your code. And you can, if you create a really good analysis that applies generally to all Go code, um, please uh, contribute to Go, please. And your contribution will be really simple. This is real code in Go, please. And there's just a slice of analyzers, and all you need to do is add your analysis in. And then Go, please will run it and show it to users. And that's it. 
So you've learned how to write an analyzer. And I think being able to write analyzers is a superpower. And I hope you use your new powers to prevent bugs in Go code everywhere. Thank you. Uh, Um, I have my code uh, at github.com slash matloop slash analysis talk. Um, also, um, also, I'm trying to beat Julie in the number of Twitter followers, so please uh, follow me. <laughs> All right, that's it. Thank you.